When we produce plots or diagrams, there are a couple of things we need to consider um, in order to make these comprehensible, also if you have a number of these kind of plots or so. So basically, of course, each diagram has two axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. Each of these axes requires um, what, what it denotes. So for example, this could be magnesium and this could be silicon. Of course, then, you also need a unit. So in this case, for example, this might be weight percent and for silicon as well weight percent. But assume you have lanthanum or something like this or trace element, then the unit here would be, for example, ppm. But now it needs to be clear what ppm means. And in this case, it's um, weight percent ppm. So you really need to put down weight percent ppm. Otherwise, it's unclear. It could also be atom percent, for example. The next thing is what we require is a scaling. So some kind of ticks here. And the scaling might, in this case, go from 10 to maybe 30 weight percent. And the same then for the y-axis. Finally, it is quite useful to have a frame and not just the axis. Because if you have a frame and then also have the ticks in this frame here, then assume we have a number of um, points we plot in this, in this, in this uh, diagram now here. And then if you publish this diagram and someone else wants to know the exact position of this, of this point here. This is now very easy because of the scaling, it's easy to draw a line because you can see, uh, you can use the scaling on the left and the scaling on the right. In case there's no scaling on the right side, it might finally look something like this because it might be a little bit tilted and then you don't get the accurate value here. And therefore, it's quite nice to have these ticks on both sides. And of course, what is required is a legend. So maybe the red is basalt, and if there are a couple of other points here, then this might be some um, peridotites, for example, or something else. And uh, in this case, it might be quite convenient if the, the red points which are a little bit higher within the plot, are also higher in the legend. It makes it, makes it more readable. And uh, the peridotites are a little bit lower, like here, for example. And finally, you might want to put down what this diagram is showing, and this might be Eiffel samples, or just Eiffel should be sufficient here then. If this is a plot you want to publish, um, it's a good idea to already write the figure caption because you need a figure caption and in the figure caption you should never start with uh, on the axis r because that's what you see all that goes into the figure caption is what you don't see f directly from the plot um, in case for example there are some some green points here and maybe some more green points here or with, with a different color maybe here the yellow because these are some other kind of periodotides and then you have something like this is R2 and the other is R1. And then people wonder what R means. And this is the thing you put in the figure caption. So R means reservoir. And by this you immediately have um, the figure caption. And this is what the figure is. So it, it has the, all the axes, um, all the descriptions, but it also has the figure caption. So this is ideal if you produce it in this way. And should you have a second plot, um, this is figure one, and then this is figure two. You should use in this figure exactly the same um, colors. So if you put in the same samples, if you also have some basalts in here, so of course it should also have a frame then. These basalts should also be red and it should also be the same symbols. So in case the periodotides here were triangles, so these are all triangles here, and you plot them in here as well, these again should be triangles. So these are very basics how to produce a plot.